just finished Umrah. Assalamu alaikum guys, we're here, we're in Mecca, we completed Umrah last night, uh, it's past Dhuhr, about to be also soon inshallah, we're about to go find some food, about to just vlog our day inshallah, hopefully we get some good footage for y'all, um, let us know if y'all like these types of vlogs from, and whatnot. From the view, from the view. So guys, this is the, the view we're working with, subhanAllah, like look at the mountains, see the Kaaba down there, all the people doing Umrah right now, it's way too hot, I don't understand this, this is crazy. May Allah accept from everyone. May Allah allow all you guys to also go to Umrah. All right, guys. So we're at one of the hotel's restaurants right now. We just ordered some food. I ordered me some like some drink I ain't never had before. It's called like a virgin colada. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna try it. We're gonna rate it one through ten. I'm gonna give you all the full experience while we're here in Mecca, inshallah. Okay, guys. You may notice that we changed locations because there was like a smell coming from like the kitchen or something. But I want to show y'all. What our setup's looking like. My boy here, very tired. <laughs> well, yeah, check out the view, man. All right, guys, so I don't know if you could tell, but like we basically rented out the whole restaurant for ourselves. It's empty right now, as you can see, so we could do this food review. What do you mean there's no one here? Obviously, because we rented out the place. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this guy. Yeah. How much did it cost, you ask? Um, it was free. You broke. The only way it don't even matter. <laughs> like, so as you can see, I've gotten my food. I'm a little default. Like, if you see a smog's plate, <laughs> that boy got some cups. <laughs> Me, you know, a regular burger, bro. But who doesn't like a good burger, bro? Look, they put some cheese in there. They put some fries. Nah, that's what I'm talking about. Before you say anything, say Bismillah in my head. All right. Very scrumptious. I can't lie to you. Wait, where's the ketchup? It's not. Can't forget this, bro. Overall, bread, very crisp. Burger, very juicy, moist. Fries, good. Deep I can give this. Fries. Oh. <laughs> okay, look. Man, even for those people who might think I'm not healthy. I give this meal a very nice 8.9 out of 10. All right, guys. So, of course, we got the lamb cups up. I always eat good, like, what can I say? But this is kind of too much for me. I'm just go right ahead. The rice is good, but it's so hot. That's it, that's it, my mouth burning. That's it, my mouth burning. Hold on, turn the camera off. Turn the, turn the camera off, turn the camera off. All right, we're back. <laughs> <It's crying. laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't think it was gonna be that hot. The lamb was hot too. I don't know. We have to come back. We have to come back. Well, have to come back. So as you can see, you can tell who finished their food and who didn't. I ain't gonna lie, they gave you a lot though. For me, I just had to, you know, a burger. Don't look at the vegetables. That don't count. I told them not to put them there. What you doing there, little buddy? Oh, <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, we're back in our hotel room right now, waiting on Asur to, uh, to Azan. Uh, and then we'll pick up the vlog from there, see what we want to do. Loki, I need some caffeine. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't want to get tired and fall asleep or something. Making our way to the mosque right now for Asur. In this, like, mall-looking thing. This is, like, in the clock towers and whatnot.
We finished also. We're gonna go get coffee. I don't I don't think they can hear me, bro. I remember oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro, I remember when it was COVID, there was no one here. And we did Umbra. This guy talking like he's on the phone or something. Bro, because they can't hear me, bro. Never seen so much people in my life, man. We're on our way to Mughal now. We were just chilling in our hotel room for a little bit. Um, I think after this, what are we trying to do? We're just chilling the Haram for our remaining for our remaining hours, man. Just trying to get as much time near the Kaaba as we can. Make they could talk, talk about some stories. Story. I want y'all to notice how full it is. Subhanallah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the hunt. For a, for a charging adapter because our charging port, or not not our port, what was it? Our battery, our battery's dead, bro. We have no way to charge our phones all the way up until we get home tomorrow. So we're low-key cooked if we don't find something. This guy doesn't want to go into a coffee shop. He wants to find something. So we'll see what we could do. Where do we go though? There's nothing in this little mall. It's like right outside the Haram, you go to like the clock towers and there's straight, what is it? What is it like um, gold shops? There's two Starbucks. There's one right there and there's one right there. Like, what, what is this? What are we doing here? Oh, we this is like, this is a competition, bro. What's going on? So we can't, we looked in the coffee shop that we went to earlier. They don't have it. Um, right now, I think we're just going to keep going up. Like, look, look how many floors there are. I, I didn't, I thought that was the last floor, the, the one with the orange chairs. But then there's another one. So now I'm wondering, what is that? Because I'm not even seeing restaurants. Oh, well, let's go explore. This one? It's not gonna have. It's not important. Quick status update. We didn't find the, the charge. Well, we did find the port, but it was too expensive. We're not gonna pay all that money just to charge here when our house back in Riyadh has it. Uh, anyway, one tip I'm gonna give you guys. Can you... <laughs> one tip I'm gonna give you guys for Umrah is to know people will push you, okay? Yesterday, we're doing tawaf, man. People are just like pushing me on my back. Like I'm, like I'm not human. Like I'm second class or something. I don't know what's going on. And you know, I don't say anything because I'm trying to focus on my ibadah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like. Maybe it's because you need to move faster. How am I supposed to move faster? There's a sunnah way to do tawaf. Are you dumb? Right. You're supposed to be brisk when you're doing your first three rounds and then your last four, you're supposed to, you know, walk normally. But how, how am I supposed to do that? People want to run through tawaf. Like what the heck? Not right, you guys. You now pray to Isha, pray to sunnahs. We're just chilling here in an indoor part of the mosque, alhamdulillah, because it's AC, so it's not too hot over here. Uh, there's halat going on in the background, but what I brought y'all here today to close out this uh, this little vlog that we did was to talk about our experience. And one of the first things I want to say, aside from the Umrah part first, was how I got to witness two of my favorite reciters. I got to pray behind Yasser al-Dosri, and I got to pray behind Abdul Rahman al -Sadais. And what's really special about Abdurrahman Sudeis is that when I first stopped listening to music and I started listening to Quran more, Abdurrahman Sudeis was the only reciter I listened to. And I used to only listen to Suri Yasin every single day on repeat That's at the nostalgia. gym. That's at the gym, during the car ride, no matter what. Anytime I needed something playing, it was Suri, uh, Suri Yasin from Abdurrahman Sudeis. And Yasir al Dosi, during Fajr, he prayed with us, uh, reciting the Surah, Surah Taqabun. And what's special about that? is uh, during Ramadan, I was at a khutbah, and uh, the khatib, who was talking about Surah Taqabun, he was like, during the time of Medina, you know, the, the surahs that came down were normally about rules and regulations, you know, prohibitions and stuff. The Surah Taqabun was about Iman, it was to, to kind of like renew the Iman in the people, to let them know, you know, to worship Allah alone, right? And so, I don't know, I felt compelled to go and memorize that surah, so I did. So when I hear Yasir al Dosri reciting a surah that I recently memorized and a surah I really like, I was like, man, it made me emotional. I was like, bro, this like, the blessing of praying in Masjid al Haram already is better than 100,000 uh, prayers anywhere else. And then listen, listen, the audio recordings, they don't do it justice. Listening to like these, like, these like top level reciters in real life, it's like so different. Touch weed different, it makes you, it feels different. Like, it, it's all just like different, it's 10 times better. Like. Way like I, I, I've listened to Yasser Dosi over like thousands of times. Like I've listened to all of like, a lot of his recitations. Just in real life, it's just it'll always be better. Every every like I don't know, I, you can't. No, even, remember, yeah, I remember, you remember, can't no, remember, remember, no, remember, remember last year when we went and did Umrah. If you guys remember, 
Well, for Fajr, it was Yasser Dosa that he read Surah Ghafir. And I remember Osman never stopped talking about that recitation. Ever, ever since we did that over, he never stopped talking about the recitation. He still had to say it. No, yeah, he went, he went on YouTube, he followed the recitation. Not only that, he went and he, he memorized the exact verses. And he, he, he read that, those verses in Salah, like whenever you play with it, he read them every single time for like three months. And he still listens to it to this day. Like if we're, if we're in the car, you know, going on a ride, He's going to open up his playlist on YouTube and Surah Ghafir from Yasir Dosiri from that day is in there. And you know what? Let's uh, let's get into our... Wait, matter of fact, I'm going to find the tongue of <laughs> Now I'm going to find it too, bro. I got to send it to you and be like, yo, I prayed here. I was there, bro. Look for me. Um, but talking about our Umrah. Um, man, we've done Umrah like every single year, alhamdulillah, for like the past three years, ever since COVID, when, when it was basically empty and there was restrictions and stuff and you had to book your Umrah like so long in advance, or like so many days in advance. But subhanAllah, every single time, it's like a new experience. It's like it's like you're doing it for the first time. And you know how Umrah is an ex expiation of sin? That's what it feels like. It feels like every single time you're coming like brand new. It's not like, oh, I've done this a million times. So it's like, it feels the same. Like, oh, you come in, you come in with new du'as, you come in with new experiences, new, like you, you've done stuff since the last time you came to Umrah and you're trying to either rectify for sins, you're trying to find something else to do in your life, you're trying to start another chapter in your life. And you're coming here pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these things in a manner that, you know, is, is part of the sunnah, is to uh, go ahead and do Umrah, to make tawaf, to do the sa'i, to practice the way that the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi practice. And it's like the closest that you'll feel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being able to do something like Umrah or of course like Hajj, but we haven't been able to do that. And man, like as packed as it is, I would not trade it for anything in the world, bro. No, I remember I remember when we did it during COVID or like the COVID times, it was so empty. You could walk and just like, you could do the tawaf right, like right next to the Kaaba. That's how empty it was. Yeah, exactly. and, like there was no pushing. There was no, like now there's pushing, but like you kind of feel like the exhaustion. Like I start, like, like I feel like really tired after Umbras. I don't know about you, but like, I feel so tired after Umbras. I don't know, bro. Every time I do stuff on Marwa, bro, it'd be so long. Uh, I wasn't even tired. I was just like, to me, I don't know. It was just the excitement, the, you know, the, not even excitement. People, people were asking me if I was excited. I was like, no, it's not really excited. It's more like locked in. Because the closer you get to, to, to the Kaaba, like you, from, the, from where you're traveling from to every, every destination you have to get to, to get to the Kaaba, to get to the doorsteps of the Kaaba, to, to the doors of Allah's mercy, you're sitting there like just thinking. You're just trying to get closer and closer to like that mindset that I need to have the most focus right now, more focus than I've ever had in anything in my life so that it's accepted from me and I get the maximum reward. I don't want anything to be taken away from me. So like, you're sitting there trying to avoid anything that can break your haram and, and stuff like that. So, I don't know, for anyone who hasn't been here, then it's an experience of a lifetime. And if you have been here, then don't ever think that you'll get used to it. Because you don't get used to it. I like, for me, I was literally thinking, man, I'd rather, I want to do this again. I want to do it before I leave. Like, I'd rather just leave the city real quick, come back, go to the Miqat, make it haram again, and then do, do it one more time. One of the things of like how beautiful it is to, to come to this city, bro, the, the most city, like busy, the busiest city on earth, the most holy city on earth, the best city on earth. The city that never sleeps. You know what Allah says in the Quran. The city that never sleeps. You're always going to be seeing someone doing prostration, someone reading the Quran, someone making a tawab. 24 7 bro. it doesn't sleep and the, the amazing thing that I was telling Usman earlier was that you see the men and the women you know they're all dressed in the same thing all the women wearing an abaya you know covered head to toe all the men wearing an haram wearing a sheet like a cloth like like you'll be uh, you'll be it's draped a, in a cloth, a like cloth when, when you're dead. Yeah, when you're dead, you're gonna be draped in a cloth. You're not. There's no status. You have no idea who here is a millionaire or billionaire or the poorest man on earth. You have no idea. You have no idea what anyone's going through. The only thing that's that's in our minds is the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We're all united in one task. We're we're sitting there making Umrah, doing the same exact tasks, wearing the same exact thing. There's no status here. The same way on the day of judgment, your wealth will not avail you. Nothing will avail you but your but your good deeds and your intentions. That's, it's, it's what you said to me. You said. And when you're doing it home, when you're doing home, you can't tell the difference between a king and the poorest man on earth. Yeah, like exactly. That's, like that's, that's different. That's real, bro. Like, when you see everyone in a prom, it's like you you get the realization that you have to put all of the, like the value that you see in people th through virtue and uh, like honest things like honesty and character and respectability, like all these things and like and like work, like religion, like these are the things that really ma matter because. It's just like you said, there wasn't, there was no status when we were all in the white cloth and we were all doing to walk and we were all worshiping God. So, you know, it's like, subhanAllah. There's no status, you're not wearing any shoes. You're, like, 
you're, you're all draped in the same thing. The only thing that you can distinguish from is who's Muslim and who's not. And here, we're all Muslim. We're all making tawaf, we're all doing umrah work. We're all here for one reason. What's that reason? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To go to the place that he told Ibrahim alayhi salam to build a house for him, and this is the house for the Muslims. The same place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the Prophet alayhi salam to turn his prayer away from Jerusalem and turn it to this area here, to the Kaaba. The place that the Prophet alayhi salam had to take from the Quraysh. He had to take from the enemies of the Muslims. Now, this is also the place that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made a dua for it, and the dua is, is fulfilled. What's the dua? We have called Ibrahim Rabbi Ja'al Hada Balin Amin. Make this city like a safe city. Yeah, yeah. this is like. And protect it from the shirk. This place, this place used to be filled with mushrik, people who. The politics. Bro, this, this was the place like of the pound. worst of the worst. And out of it came the best of mankind. Like, it's, it's so crazy. You, know, you want to tell me that. I don't want to tell you anything. No, I'm saying like. <laughs> <I'm not telling laughs> I say like non-Muslims want to tell me that you know Islam is not like the truth, right? But when you see what, what Islam came from, the Muslims, not the Muslims, the Mecca was home to the worst of mankind, bro. It was home to the worst of mankind, polytheists, people who associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were the worst of their women, they worst of their to, children. They used to bury their daughters. They used, yes, they used to bury their daughters. And out of it came the greatest of mankind. And he had to go away from his tribe, just like Ibrahim alayhi salam had to go away from his father to fulfill what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked of them. Something that obviously none of us could have to bear or could bear. But alhamdulillah, we don't have to bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed that burden from us and gave us the greatest religion on earth. Like yeah. You sit here and you're, you're feeling like the safest ever. We're literally just chilling in the mosque right now. Like, alhamdulillah, nothing, nothing going on. We're just chilling. You can fall asleep right here. Nothing will happen to you. 